neglected has become the cornerstone. Hosanna to the Son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our procession with branches even to the altar. to the Son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King. our hope to you we come with hymns of praise echoing those who hailed you as messiah and king make us honor you always by doing the works of love and justice your spirit inspires in us so that when you come in glory you may recognize us as those who truly belong to you for you are the living one now and forever amen, amen. we sing our opening hymn all glory praise and honor <laughs>
and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us prepare our hearts for the divine mysteries. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the commandments which God gave to his people Israel. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods but me. Lord, have mercy on us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not make for yourself a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. Lord, Lord have, have mercy on us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Lord, Lord have, have mercy on us and incline our hearts to keep, keep this law. law. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labour and do all you have to do, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Lord, have mercy on us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honour your father and your mother. Lord, have mercy on us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall do no murder. Lord, have mercy on us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy on us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not steal. Lord, have mercy on us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. Lord, have mercy on us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not covet anything that is your neighbour's. Lord, have mercy on us and incline our hearts to keep this law. God, the forgiveness of your sins by the forgiveness of our sins by your mercy, so that we may worthily prepare the way for Christ as he approaches 
and through good work done by your grace, may obtain the pardon of the victory. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 50, beginning in verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insults and spitting, but Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. He is the Lord who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Have mercy. Thou hast not shut me up into the hand of the enemy, but hast set my feet in a large room. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble, and mine eye is consumed for very heaviness. Yea, my soul and my body. For my life is waxen old with heaviness, and my years with mourning. My strength faileth me because of mine iniquity, and my bones are consumed. I became a reproof among all mine enemies, but especially among my neighbours, and they of mine acquaintance were afraid of me, and they that did see me without conveyed themselves from me. I am clean forgotten as a dead man out of mind, I am become like a broken vessel. For I have heard the blasphemy of the multitude, and fear is on every side, while they conspire together against me, and take their counsel to take away my life. But my hope hath been in thee, O Lord. I have said, Thou art my God. My time is in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Show thy servant the light of thy countenance, and save me from thy mercy's sake. Let me not be confounded, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the ungodly be put to confusion, and be put to silence in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, 
which cruelly, disdainfully, and despitefully speak against the, the righteous. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians, chapter 2, beginning at the fifth verse. Let the same mind be in you that was in, Je in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but empties himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him a name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you stand for our gradual hymn, Hail Redeemer, King Divine. Blessed is the King, who is the King, who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise and honor to Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. 
passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke, chapter 23, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you are needing to sit during the passion reading, feel free to, as it is a longer reading. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea from Galilee where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. The same day, Herod and Pilate Began, became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they shouted all out together, Away with this fellow, release Barabbas for us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify, crucify him. A third time he said to them, why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized the man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. 
one of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and the darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sunlight faded and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last breath. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. This is the passion of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May I speak to the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please have a seat. This week, I was asked to cover the scripture lesson at Katara High, as our wonderful teacher, Liz Brown, had contracted COVID, Um, so we certainly hold her in our prayers, and I asked her what she wanted me to teach on Monday at the school, and she asked me, of all things, was to cover uh, Good Friday and Holy Week. (laughs) a lot to cover in an hour lesson. (laughs) No small task uh, to do in an hour. Now, and in the lesson, we spoke about why is Good Friday called good, especially when you consider that Jesus died on that day. And so this led into a light discussion, as you can imagine, about atonement theology. Uh, Atonement just means at one moment or, you know, reconciliation, uh, relationship with God. And all the children gave a, a similar idea that Jesus died to save me from my sin, which is an acceptable understanding. However, What I encourage them to do is to think more in their understanding and where we ended up looking back uh, at the lesson and all the stuff we put on the board, so the kids didn't articulate it, but this is sort of the theme that was sort of that came through, is that Christ died to redeem humanity and that because of this fact, through a contrite and living faith in Jesus, his death and resurrection, and through union with him, we are able to work out our own salvation. Because for many of us have uh, thought, have we actually thought much about the nature of which we are able to have relationship with God through the death of Jesus? Whilst probably one of the main aspects of Christianity, do we often discuss it? Or are we able to talk about it with others? The ideas of doctrines can be a difficult one uh, for Anglicans, not because we do not have them, but rather that we don't have them spelled out for us in uh, like some other denomination. So uh, when you look at doctrine in the Anglican Church, uh, does anyone know what the, uh, the foundation for all um, doctrine and theology for the Anglican Church are? It's three things three things. It says it in our constitution. (laughs) 
What was that, Chris? There was, it was. Let me help you out. Was anyone going to say the Bible? Good. No, the Bible is not one. <laughs> Quite surprisingly, it is. The Book of Common Prayer, 1662, the ordinal for the making of deacons, bishops and priests, and what are we known for? 39... Oh, wonderful, we got there. It's good. But that is what uh, we have as formal teaching, right? But we still have doctrines and dogmas like other churches as well. We just don't have them solidified in a formal document. And like all doctrines, the one of Christ's death is based on the New Testament, which even though uh, divinely inspired, the New Testament is still written by humans who have their limitations. And what I mean by this is not that they are not the foundation of the faith or that they're, you know, able to... uh, uh, they're disqualified because they're written by people, but rather their ways of communicating the idea of God is limited by human analogies. Um, that is, they fail to encompass the wholeness of God. Such an example that I'd like to use is, remember when we did that sermon series on the, uh, the parables? The kingdom of heaven is like. And in the same way, the image presented does not encompass the fullness of the whole of the coming of the kingdom, right? So it has to be like something. But it's something like X, or it's like Y. In the same way, uh, this inadequacy applies to the dealings of the infinite, which is God, and us, his creation. The sound words we are given through the gospel and the epistles are the formation of how we understand how and why we are made acceptable to God. Whilst we can spend hours trying to figure out the mystery of the passion story and how it leads to our salvation, what I would rather do in the time I have is to consider why it matters at all. Something that we often forget is that we as humans are designed for relationship and even more so the fulfilling life or in the knowledge that even though, you know, (laughs) Zeb, me, (laughs) is a hypocrite, always love talking about myself in the third person, a person who does not live up to the fullness of who God calls him to be, a broken sinner, that God still desires that divine fellowship with me and in the same way, you too. That is imparted in each one of us when we are made in the image of God. And because this relationship is based on the righteousness of God, we must also participate in this as well. But what happens when we are not righteous? Righteousness demands an entire removal of sinfulness and a real reparation, or if you're not sure what reparation means, a action to amend the wrong that has been done. Uh, Another word you could use is maybe justice. Part of this true and meaningful reparation is the conviction we have that in our humanity we acknowledge that we have failed to live the lives that God has called us to be, especially through the life of Jesus. If we are to embrace a life that is Christ's focus, it is his death that leads us to say, I see how what we do as people lead you to your death. I want to have you at the centre of my life. This is the key that opens the door to, the, uh, to that preparation that, comes, uh, that causes us to embrace the gift of grace, the gift of salvation that was seen through the sin of the world. The people of Israel before Jesus, the, um, the Old Testament, 
prepared for the gift of the Messiah for generations by living by the law, offering what they could, which, as we know, always fell short. Because what do we as humans do? We stuff it up. (laughs) Or at least I do. Maybe someone here is perfect and I'm not. (laughs) But only God knows that relationship with you. It is through our union with him who, as we heard in Paul's letter, poured out everything he had for us, taking on the form of a slave and dying on the cross. Even so, our ourselves, our humanity, saw the death of Jesus, our brokenness, it is by that same way we are united in him. Jesus, in taking on our human nature, fully immersed himself in our world, bringing what is ours into himself. And by this sharing of our humanity, saw the Redeemer of the world see a life of painful and extraordinary obedience to the Father and to submit to the will of God. Then in his sharing, shatters the power of death by his resurrection. The body that was resurrected on Easter is not just his body, but the body that is shared with us and, you know, all humanity, all all people. This shared nature of the body of Christ, which we are participants in, is the true and meaningful union with Jesus. This is the body of Christ we are part of, which died with him on the cross at our baptism, will rise from the dead with him on the last day, and lives with him in the journey of life, all of which is life breathed into by his Holy Spirit. And it is by the Holy Spirit we are able to work out our salvation. As we enter into this Holy Week and participate in the traditions of the church, such as Maundy Thursday, or does anyone know what Maundy means? Do I hear a yes? Oh, close. <laughs> We do do that. We, could, we, we have a poor box usually on Maundy Thursday, but that's good. Uh, Maundy comes from the Old English, which means commandment. And so we, uh, well, I wash your feet. So please come along so I can wash your feet. <laughs> no laugh, okay. <laughs> but that's okay. So let me commend to you to come to, we have Maundy Thursday, we have Good Friday, uh, we have Easter Vigil, and we have Easter Sunday, and we also have Tenenbrae on Wednesday. But from Good Thursday, uh, Maundy Thursday to Easter Vigil, it's one long service. So it's not one you just pick and choose what you want to go to, but you actually are meant to move through the motions of that Holy Week experience. Um, I can guarantee that we're going to have, uh, as always, wonderful music, and lots of things going on. So uh, there's still flyers down the back if you want to grab one, or I hope you have one on your fridge. These services are to help us lead us on that journey of Easter. I would like you to encourage as you enter this Easter season or this Passion Week, To not think whether the death of Jesus was necessary, but rather how what his death achieved, something that we could not. We, without his death and resurrection, we would not be able to be saved from our sin or the consequences from that sin or of that sin. We are made acceptable to God by his outpouring of Jesus something that we could never do to rectify the distance caused by what we do that separates us from God. All we can do is work out where we stand on this outrageous, over-the-top action of God and where we choose to place ourselves. Do we reject it? 
or do we live a life by the way of repentance and seeking that righteousness which can be obtained by the death of Jesus? It only is only by Jesus' own death that we can even consider entering the holiest of holies, as we heard the temple curtain was torn in two. It is the only way that we can truly satisfy the conditions required to make amends for the sin that we have caused, and at the same time convict us in our, some would use the word depravity or humanity or brokenness, to which we wallow in, prompting us to work out our own relationship with God. God could have chosen to let us live in a state of separation, however, He chose to provide us a means of salvation and redemption. He is not driven by anything else, but by a drive, uh, sorry, a divine love for us, His creation. His approaching of us was purely voluntary, as the one who sends His Son into the world as the Father and as the one who came to redeem us as Jesus Christ. At the centre of this action is the thing which all things about Jesus point to, that divine love that stretches beyond our understanding. Often in our understanding of what people do, we can be uh, inmates, one may say. If you think about... Um, So, do you remember we used to have correctional services come and mow our lawns before COVID? (laughs) Good. (laughs) Uh, Those boys were wonderful, (laughs) Um, but some of them had been previously in and out of jail, uh, and you hear how society treats them when they've done uh, time for the crimes they have committed, or even when they're doing their first, uh, you know, they're first in jail and they're out doing work parole stuff, how people treat them. The good news is, is that people, well, the bad news is that people still tend to judge others even when they have left prison or the institution, they've done their time. But I think the good thing is, is that God says sinners too can be delivered from sin and loved just as much as anyone else. Even after, you know, the time has been served... The reparation has been made. If God thought like we do at times, I think He would probably withhold or refuse the means of our salvation. That is why when God determined that Jesus would die, it was a death that would break the power of sin for all humanity through all time. So my prayer this week is that we take time to work out our own salvation and how Good Friday, how Holy Week, how the Easter story fits into that picture. Not to see us become distant to God, but rather embrace Him more in our lives, knowing that we are all sinners, but by what God has done for us, we are made acceptable to God by following His Son. Amen. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Please sit or kneel as able. Let us pray for the church and for the world, to the Lord, the King of glory. As the church rejoices in triumphant entry of our Lord, grant to us also the spirit of repentance and sorrow for his suffering. May we, at this holy time, set forward the message of his salvation and lay our minds and wills before him as an offering of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring to a world that judges the outward signs of power and wisdom to discern where true power lies in humility and love. Open the eyes of the rulers of the nations to see the one true king and be ready to serve at his command. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to us and to all those around us the vision of holiness in the daily scene, of work and play. Help us to find those who too easily take for granted the image of Christ the Lord and to honour one another as those who seek to follow in his way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have mercy on the sick and suffering, whom from the shadow of the cross is plainer at this time than the glory of the day, and who call out not in triumph but in anguish. Give them relief in their affliction and hope for new life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the voices of those who bore witness to God in this world now be blended with the eternal praise of the angels in heaven. May theirs with Mary, our, the mother of our Lord, St. Joseph, her spouse, and all the saints be the song of triumph over sin and death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, Today, your son enters his city to inaugurate the coming of this hour. Let us share the blessing you bestow on the poor in spirit, that we may truly welcome him as the saviour of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the comfortable words our Saviour Christ said to all who truly turn to him. Jesus said, Come to me all that you that are weary and uh, carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Hear also what St Paul said, The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand? We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
we share God's peace together. That's all right. PJ, George, James, Ellery, Kirsten, Asher. Thank you, Kirsten. That's all right. We'll get there, Kirsten. That's all right. St. Paul said, the point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or on compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Our offertory hymn is Firmly I Believe and Truly. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this gift of our labor. Accept and use this offering for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Put a humble spirit in front of us, humble Lord, and we trust you. Today we offer this Eucharist in memory of uh, Eden Waters Cohen for the consolation of his family and for the care and repose of his soul. God, our joy, let the praises we sing and the communion we share at your table 
give you glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always here and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Though he was innocent, he freely accepted suffering for the guilty and an unjust sentence on behalf of sinners. His death has washed away our sins. His rising has restored us to peace with you. And so, Lord God, with angels and all saints, we exalt and glorify your holy name. God, all creation rightly gives you praise, all life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. Hear us, merciful Lord, through Christ accept our sacrifice of praise, and by the power of your word and Holy Spirit, sanctify this bread and wine, that we who share in this holy sacrament may be partakers of Christ's body and blood who, when his hour had come on the night before he went up to the cross to make a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, offering once for all his one sacrifice to himself, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Taste, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks he gave it to them saying drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me the mystery of Christ, the death that has destroyed death, the rising that promises the glory of all flesh, the return that will bring your justice to the living and the dead. Thus, in thanksgiving, we bring before you the one holy and living sacrifice. God most high, look upon this Eucharist, sanctified by the Holy Spirit, and sanctify us who receive these gifts. Unite us in the one living bread as partakers in the body of Christ, and through the one cup of his blood, let us taste communion in the Holy Spirit and the joy of the age to come. Gracious God, renew the life of your church. Remember Peter, our bishop, and all ministers who break and share the living bread among us. Remember those broken in body or spirit. Give them peace from the glorious wounds by which we have been healed. Remember us all, both living and departing, communion with all your saints. Gather your church together in Christ, in whom all things in heaven and on earth are blessed and made holy, and raise up before your face eternally to give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, gracious Father, forever and ever. Savior. 
Spirit Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be share in the body of Christ, we who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. You who are with us in spirit, give thanks for the saving death and resurrection of Jesus, and ask him to be with you now. Intercessions of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Christ, the body of our Lord. 
Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in eternal life. The royal banners forward go, the cross shines forth in misty glow, where he in flesh our flesh will made, our sentence for our ransom. soldier's spear was opened wide to cleanse us in the precious blood of water mingled with his blood. Fulfilled is now what day prophetic song of old, how God the nation's king should be, for God is reigning from the tree, O tree of glory, tree Ordain those holy limbs to bear, how bright in purple robe it stood, the pure, the spoil of Elsia's blood. Upon its arms, like balance true he weighed the price for sinners due the price which none but he could pay and spoil the spoil To you, eternal three in one, let homage to by all be done, as by the cross your reign restore, so
let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ. Gracious God, you nourish us in this present age with the food and drink from on high. Through this holy feast, make us partakers in your eternal glory of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Send us down in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Wonderful to see you all. I hope you're ready for coffee because I am certainly in need of one now. <laughs> Thank you for coming today for Palm Sunday. Reminder that the service times for Holy Week are at the back of the church. Please come along. They're going to be wonderfully uh, done. Uh, Ellery we will miss because Ellery is off to take one of his choirs to uh, a folk festival in Canberra. So he will not be with us, but we send him with our blessing. Would you like a blessing for that before you go, Ellery? No, he's okay. He's a bit shy. <laughs> Don't put me on the spot, Zeb. <laughs> Uh, so we send Ellery with our blessing, uh, and Kirsten, who is obviously with us today as well, will be uh, filling in for Ellery over Holy Week, so we'll still have wonderful music uh, and material at all our services, so uh, thank you, Kirsten, uh, and Sue, uh, who brings Kirsten along, I'm sure, who couldn't do it, and also to Violet, uh, who uh, is a much-needed part of the team as well, so it's lovely to have you with us. Otherwise, is there any birthdays, anniversaries, or things I should be aware of? No? Wonderful. Let's uh, stand and we'll have the dismissal and then go for morning tea. Christ our Saviour draw you to himself that you may find in him crucified a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sin forgiven. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And our final hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Amen.